be bold, be strong, love loud, be triumphant, be bold, be strong, love loud, be triumphant. Good morning to everyone. Morning. We're excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning and we're expecting something amazing from the Lord this morning. He has been with us throughout the course of this week and we know this morning he will be with us. I want to thank everyone that is here in the house, those that are joining online. We believe that God is in the midst of us and God is with you where you are. Thank you for joining and let's get ready to worship the Lord. Everyone in the house, let's lift our hands and give God glory. Would you stand to your feet with me and begin to worship the Lord? Let's make a sanctuary. Even those of you at home, those who are watching wherever you are, would you lift your hands and begin to give God glory? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us continue to worship our God. Hallelujah. Our God who reigns. Our God who rules. Hallelujah. He reigns with power. He reigns in majesty. He reigns in dominion and authority. Can someone say, God, you reign. God, you reign. He is the name above every name this morning. So we glorify him for who he is. You up, oh God, for you are worthy. Hallelujah. We magnify you. We glorify you. Yeah. My God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Lord, you reign. Above every name. Above every name. Above every name. Above every name. He reigns in power and majesty. Power and majesty. Dominion and God, you reign. My God, you reign with power and majesty. Power and majesty. Dominion and God, you reign. Lord, you reign. You reign. Hey, sing, my God reign. My God reign. Our God reign. Our God reign. Our God reigns, Lord, you reign above every name. 
So you get the glory, Lord. You get the honor, Lord. You get our praise. You get all our praise. You get the glory, Lord. You get the honor, Lord. For you get the praise. You get the praise. You get the glory, Lord. You get the honor, Lord. You get the praise. You get the praise. You get the glory, Lord. You get the honor, Lord. For you get our praise. You get our praise. You get the glory, Lord. You get the honor, Lord. You get the praise. You get the praise. You get the glory, Lord. You get the glory, Lord. You get the honor, Lord. You get the honor, Lord. You get the praise. You get the praise. You get our praise. You get our praise. You get the glory, Lord. You get the glory, Lord. You get the praise. You get the praise. You get the praise. You get the glory, Lord. You get the glory, Lord. You get the honor, Lord. You get the honor, Lord. You get our praise. You get our praise. You get our praise. You get our praise. You get the glory, Lord. You get the glory, Lord. You get the honor, Lord. You get the honor, Lord. You get the praise. Oh God, you get a praise. You get a praise. Receive the glory, Lord. You get the glory, Lord. Receive our honor, Lord. You get the honor, Lord. You get a praise. You get the praise. For you get a praise. You get the praise. You get the glory, Lord. You get the glory, Lord. You get the honor, Lord. You get the honor, Lord. You get the praise. You get the praise. You get the praise. You get the glory, Lord. You get the honor, Lord. You get the honor, Lord. You get the praise. 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 My soul will magnify you. And my spirit will sing a praise. You get the praise. For you will get our worship. You get the praise. For you will get our praise. You get the praise. You get the praise. You get the praise. My God, you get the praise. You get the praise. You get the praise. You get the praise. You get the 
morning. All honor belongs to our matchless God this morning. All praise belongs to our matchless God this morning. We cry, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. There's none like him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give him glory. We give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This afternoon, I give honor to the Spirit of God and to our bishop and first lady in their absence, to Pastor Richards. Amen, Evangelist Richards. God bless you. Pastor David in her absence and Pastor Lindsay. God bless you and all the ministers deacons, evangelists, and all the ministers of the gospel. This morning, indeed, it's a joy to be in the house of God. I don't know about being here right at this point, but I thank God that I can be in the house of God. Things could have been otherwise, but because of God's grace and his mercy, this morning we are in the house of God. Praise the name of the Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We praise your holy name. Father, in the name of Jesus, we stretch our hands to you this morning. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor and the praise. We thank you for the privilege of bringing us in your house to worship you. And so, Father, as we come today, we ask that you will continue to be in our midst. I pray you will speak, O oh God, through me and for me. And let the words of my mouth today in the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh God, my strength and my redeemer. I ask your blessing upon your children today. In Jesus' name. Amen. This is Palm Sunday. This is Palm Sunday. Hallelujah. And we celebrate Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. In St. Matthew chapter 21, when they would throw the palm trees, they would straw on the street with palm branches, and they would shout, Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And he made his way to Jerusalem. He did not go to Jerusalem to take vengeance. He rode into Jerusalem for a purpose. Glory to God. This time, it is a specific purpose that he rode into Jerusalem. He allowed himself to suffer. This is the beginning of his suffering. Amen. Amen. He suffered the, gr the greatest indignities that any human being could have suffered. Amen. He was betrayed. 
he was denied. He was dragged from one judgment hall to the next. He was humiliated. Ah, oh God, he was spat upon. He was mocked. He was jeered. He was beaten. Amen. And in spite of all of that and more, he told Pilate in St. John chapter 18 and verse 37, he said, to this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world. He was crucified and paid the ultimate sacrifice for our sins. What a God. What boundless love. He knew exactly what he was getting into, yet he did not refrain from doing it. Jesus came and fulfilled his purpose. And we as his followers today, we also have a cause and a purpose. I want to exhort you and myself as I bring the topic of this very, very short message. We are in the kingdom for such a time as this. We are in the kingdom for such a time as this. If you would turn with me, amen, to 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verses 1 to 5. 2 Timothy 3, verses 1 to 5. Let's stand. Just stand for a little while as we read the word of God. 2 Timothy chapter 3. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. This is the word of God. Our heart says amen. Now Paul thought it necessary to write unto Timothy and telling him, forewarning him about the lost days. This know also that in the last days perilous time shall come. And we can easily change the word shall to has. Perilous time has come. Perilous times are here. Amen. Glory to God. And perilous means full of great risk or peril. Dangerous times. And Paul wanted Timothy, or us rather, amen, to know that when we see these things, we, he wants us to know that these things indicate that we are in the last days. Amen. And when we see them, we should not be alarmed. Glory to God. Men ought to love themselves. He said men shall be lovers of themselves. Men ought to love themselves. But now we see there is an irregular, sinful self-love. Love themselves. Glory to God. Think great and big and high about themselves. Sinful self-love. Men love their carnal self more than though they love God. Men love to gratify their own self and make provision for their own flesh. Glory to God. It doesn't matter what is happening. It's all about me. Last days. Glory to God. Instead of Christian charity, which will take care of good, the good of others, men will prefer their own self-gratification. You wonder nowadays why people are so selfish. Don't think about anybody else. It's the last days. These are indicators of the last days. My God. Glory to God. 
Amen. The Bible says, covetous bolsters. These are self-explanatory. I'm not going to go into their definition. You can look the definition when you get home. Amen. Proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unthankful, unholy, no gratitude, doesn't matter what you do, amen, there is no gratitude, unthankfulness and unholiness make the days perilous, and these two usually go together, unthankfulness and unholiness. Oh God, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, which is lacking restraint, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, betray the trust that is committed to them. My God, glory to God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. They are called by the Christian name, even baptized in the Christian faith, and show a form of Christianity, but will not submit to the power of God. We see this on January 6th. Before they storm the Capitol, we see the men huddle in prayer. They huddle together in prayer with a Bible in their hand. Amen. And they claim to be some kind of a Christian. And in a couple minutes, they stormed the capital. Amen. And lives were lost. Denying the power of God, the Bible said, from such, turn away. Paul, Paul warned us when we see all these behavior are ex exhilarating. We know that we are in the last days. We need to be conscious that we are in the last days. And when we look around and see all that is happening now, my God, the racial tension. We have never seen anything like this. These are unprecedented time. My God, the upheaval, the discontent, the hatred, the racial disparity, the lying spirit. There is a lying spirit that is overing over this country. But regardless of the challenges that we face, glory to God, we as people of God can handle it. God has given us the grace to overcome, for we are in the kingdom for such a time as this. We are not to be alarmed. Amen. Or to be frustrated like the world. Because these were written in the Bible for us to be conscious of. My God. Praise the name of the Lord. God has prepared us for these last days. We are going on and although we think we are feeble. But God has prepared us for these last days. And I believe if we could not handle the last days that we are in. He would have taken us out of the world. Amen. Can you imagine over 5 million people die in this country? And we are still here. There's nothing great about us. But God has a purpose why we are still here. In this time of uncertainty, when everything seems to be upside down, God, allow us to be alive in this season. Glory to God. In Ecclesiastic 3 verse 1, the Bible declares to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. We are living in a changing world, saints. Every change concerning us with the time and the season of it, it is fixed and determined by the supreme power of God. It is not in our power to change what is appointed, but to realize our purpose in the time and season that we are in. We cannot afford to miss our purpose 
of being in the kingdom at this time. We as people of God have to be on the alert and to renew our minds with the word of God. Amen. And be ready to lead those who are groping in darkness to the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because it is possible to be in the kingdom. Amen. And forget your purpose. It is so possible. And I just want to draw your attention to Esther 4. Amen. A young orphan girl. We know the story of Esther. She was raised by her uncle Mordecai. Amen. They were taken from Jerusalem in captivity. But we want to know that even in captivity, God's purpose will not be denied. Glory to God. You know the story that when the king banished Vashti from the kingdom, amen, and he for disobeying him, the, the proclamation went out that the king was seeking a wife. And so, amen, the, they brought Esther and other maiden into the kingdom. Amen. And but the, because of the plan of God, amen, Hester was favored above all the other maiden. Amen. Glory to God. She found grace and favor in the eyes of the king. Glory to God. Esther's purpose was not only to be queen in the kingdom. She had a greater purpose to be there. She was there to save the Jewish nation. You know the story. Uh, but she had to be reminded. Because when her uncle Mordecai, when the Jews were in trouble, and the only person that can save them is the king. And so Mordecai sent her a letter. And tell her of the plight of the Jews. My God, she did not see the plight really. Because she thought she was only there to be queen. Amen. She said, I cannot go to the king because he had not called me. And anybody who ventured to go to the king before an appointment, you can be killed. So I cannot go to see the king. Mordecai realized the danger and wrote her another letter in Esther chapter 4 verse 14. For if thou altogether hold thy peace at this time, relief and deliverance from the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. And who knows that you have come into the kingdom for such a time as this? Glory to God. Glory to God. Who to knows that you have come into the kingdom for such time? A time of this. God has a purpose, saints. God has a purpose for every one of us. Amen. And all we have to do, we must consider to what end God has us in the place where we are. And study to answer that end. And when any particular opportunity arise of serving God and others, we must not let it slip. For we are in the kingdom for such a time as this. Glory to God. God has entrusted us with the business of the kingdom. Look at us. In these last days, God has entrusted us with the business of the kingdom to improve it. Mordecai had to remind Esther, this was not the time to relax or be passive. The lives of the Jews were at stake. Praise the God. So it is with us as believers. COVID, glory to God, did not exist for the church to go on vacation. Glory to God. We can't afford and, and play as if we are on vacation. This is not why COVID exists. We have to take the necessary precaution, but we have to go forward in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. We cannot afford to cower back in fear, to hang up our hearts, as the preacher said the other day. Glory to God. 
It is a time to fortify ourselves, arise to the challenges that face us. We are in the kingdom for this time, and God has equipped us and has given us a last day anointing. Amen. If God have us in the kingdom for these last days, he's going to furnish us. He's going to prepare us. Amen. We are not just going to be here like some little wave. But we continue to go forward in the name of the Lord. Amen. He has given us the last day's anointing. And don't let the devil tell you otherwise. Amen. I think the pandemic has come to prove who we really are. Who we really are. Hallelujah. And it comes for us to take that introspective look within ourselves. To build a relationship with ourselves. Amen. To love ourselves. Because if we can't love ourselves, we can't love anybody else. And we cannot love God. We first have to love ourselves. Glory to God. I think it is time for us, church, to gird up our spiritual loins and grow up. We have to grow up. We can't be babies all day long. We have to put away the nipple bottle. We have to spit out the pacifier. Amen. Every time encourage, you need to be encouraged every little thing, every little thing, every little thing. It's time for the church to grow up. Glory to God. And it doesn't matter how long you are saved. Amen. You can be saved for 50 years, 60 years, and you're still not grown up in God. Amen. But it's time for us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We can't afford to be at the same stage year after year, going around the same mountain, discontented about the same thing. Upset about the same thing. Discouraged about the same thing. Over and over and over again. Somebody said, be the change you want to see. Glory to God. The devil has such a stronghold on the people of God. But in the name of Jesus, we are breaking the stronghold of this hop and down. Hop and and down. Today I'm in, tomorrow I'm out. Today I'm pleased, tomorrow I'm displeased. We are breaking it in the name of Jesus. And we declare stability and growth in the name of Jesus. So we will go forward and accomplish God's purpose. Hallelujah. In Philippians 1, Philippians 4 verses 7 and 8. Paul wrote, and the peace of God that passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. This peace will keep us calm and sedated even in the midst of crisis. Verse 8, he said, finally, my brethren, in other words, Paul is saying, for your spiritual sanity, and for your spiritual survival. This is the conclusion. Whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are honest. What's, I tell you, people are quicker to believe a lie than the truth. Amen. You have a hard time convinced people of the truth. But Paul is saying here this morning... Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise for your spiritual survival, think on these things. Glory to God. We have it all right there. For you to survive in these last days. Think on these things. Not the things that you are hearing around you. 
Not the things that will upset your spirit. Hallelujah. But whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue or if there be any praise. Think on these things. Learn these things. Imitate these things. Virtue is a behavior that shows high moral standard. And we should try to walk in the ways of virtue. Amen. And whether our praise will be of men or not, it will be of God. When we walk in virtue. Amen. We have kingdom business to do. COVID or no COVID. We have to find a way. Do take the necessary precaution. But we have to find a way. We cannot cower down and say it's COVID. And we can't do this because of COVID. COVID is just a name. Hallelujah. Not the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. COVID must bow at the name. Hallelujah. At the name of Jesus. We can't afford for COVID. I mean everything COVID. Everything COVID. Everything COVID. It's there and you're not ignoring it. And you can't ignore it. And you cannot be foolish also. But take the necessary precaution and let's go on in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. We bless the name of Jesus. Because we have kingdom business to do, saints. And we must find a way. We cannot afford to have our minds as playground for the devil. And during the ages, God has people strategically place, put in place to meet the challenges of the time. Amen. He had Moses grew up in Egypt and trained in Egypt. And he had Moses to deliver the children of Israel. He had Joseph sold as a slave in Egypt. My God, he was there as a slave. And as Joseph, he was exalted to be governor after being all that Joseph went through. God has a purpose, and he was exalted as a governor in Egypt. And he, when his brethren came to him, Joseph said, Now therefore be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that he sold me hither. For God did send me before you to preserve life. God has strategically placed him there. And as born again believers, we should ask ourselves the question, what is my purpose in the kingdom at this time? What is my purpose in the kingdom at this time? Is it just to come on Sundays for one hour or one and a half hour? And next week, we repeat the same thing again. There's got to be more. There's got to be more to this Christianity in the last days than this. Oh, God, the preacher told us last week that we have to reframe our minds. And we have to use what we have, and God will make it work for us. We cannot afford to do nothing. We cannot afford to do nothing. That's not an option to sit down and just wait for the trumpet to sound. That is not an option. We cannot afford to do nothing. The song said, if you cannot cross the ocean and the heathen land explore, you can find the heathen nearer. You can help them at the door. God has allowed us to have a food pantry to help the community. We can start with that. We can start with that if you can. Come, some of you cannot come, we know. But those of you can come, you come and give an helping hand. And now you are cleaning out your closet. Amen. Because you probably have gotten a little heavier during COVID. Or smaller or whatever. And you are cleaning out nice clean clothes. Amen. You bring it and the community, we can give it to the community. Amen. Because ministry is not within the four walls. 
And COVID shows us that. Amen. That even if the doors of the church is shut, ministries still have to go on. Amen. We have to reevaluate and see how we can do things differently. Amen. Whatever is happening, then we fit ourselves in the season and the time that we are in. And still let the work of God continue. Let social media work for you, as the preacher was saying last week. People who hardly have a voice in church is flooding the church WhatsApp. Don't send it to the church WhatsApp only. Because the people you are sending it to, they are saved. They are already saved. Send it to your family. Send it to your unsaved friends. Amen. Use your WhatsApp, your Twitter, Instagram. And whatever device you have, use it for the gospel's sake. Amen. Witness, don't come off of Twitter for the day or Instagram or whatever you're on. Don't come off for the, for the day and you have not passed a scripture or an encouraged word to somebody. That is a place of um, spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. We can't afford to do nothing. We must find what is working for us in this season and let it work for us. In Isaiah 61, in the ladies' convention, after receiving beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And they shall build the whole waste places. They shall raise the former desolation. And they shall repair the waste cities. Beauty for ashes is for a reason. Amen. Is to build the whole waste places. After you have received beauty for ashes, God has resurrected you. Brought you back to life. Then they shall build the whole waste places. Glory to God. Glory to God. And by the power of God's grace and the gospel of Jesus Christ, we can build the whole waste places. We have to find something to do, saints. Amen. The world is watching and the world is looking at us. We cannot cower back in fear. We cannot hang up our hearts. We cannot afford to be discouraged and to be disheartened. Amen. Because there is great work in the vineyard to do. God has us in the kingdom. There is a purpose for us in the kingdom for such a time as this. I want us to consider this. Amen. And as I've said already, we ask ourselves the question, why am I in the kingdom at this time? I don't care how hard and I don't care how difficult it may seem. God have you in his kingdom right now for a purpose. And we have to find out what is that purpose. Amen. And maximize that purpose that God has called us for and allow us to be in the kingdom at this difficult time, these last days, amen. And we can see for ourselves that the end of all things is at hand. We are in the last of the last days. The Bible said, let us cast off the work of darkness. Glory to God and put you on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We are in the kingdom, saints. And you and I, let us try and seek and find out why, why I'm in the kingdom for this time. God bless you today. This is my encouragement to the hearts of you. Amen. That we will realize, amen, that we are here for a purpose. And we find out the purpose that God would have us here. And work it to the glory of God. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You may be here today. 
Maybe you have backslidden or you have strayed from the pathway of God. It's time to find your way back home. It's time to come home. It's time to come home. Amen. Glory to God. No longer, the songwriter said, in the path of sin I will roam. I'm coming home. Glory to God. And if you are here today, we want to pray with you. We want to pray with you. Glory to God that you will find your way home before time changes into eternity. Because it won't be like this every day. One day we're going to wake up in eternity. Amen. And where will you be? If you are here, you can come forward your step. Amen. Forward. And we will pray with you. And even if you are saved and you feel that you have lost purpose, you don't know if you are coming or if you are going. Come, we would like to pray with you also. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory, God. We give you praise. We acknowledge your sovereignty, Lord, and realize that we are just but dust. But because of your great mercy, oh God, we can stand today. Father, I come to you on behalf of your children that are standing before the altar rail. You know the hearts, you know the mind, you know the thoughts. And you know the reason why they are standing before you. We pray this more afternoon in the name of Jesus that you will touch, oh God, 
whatever the condition is. Oh God, I know, Lord, that you are able. And so I pray even now you will step in it, Lord. Oh God, and let your name be glorified. We ask that your blessing will rest upon them, Lord. Oh God, oh God, we commit them in your hand. Oh God, those who are not saved today, Lord, maybe they are watching online. I pray for a special touch, oh God, upon your people. Oh God, bring us to the realization that we are in the very last days. Oh God, we are living in perilous times. Oh God, but we can only be sheltered when we are in the hand of God. I pray that you will bless now, Father. Touch everyone individually, collectively, I pray. Oh God, those who made the step to the altar today, special touch upon their lives. Oh God, and that you will prove yourself more and more. We thank you for hearing our prayers today. We thank you for what you're doing, Lord, what you're about to do. We give you all the glory today. We give you all the honor. We give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. Sanctuary. Lord, for you. Everyone, just lift your hands and say, Lord, for you. Lord, for you. Lord, for you. Lord, for you. As a sign of surrender, you can just lift both hands. I'm yours, Lord. Lord, for you. We surrender to his will. His way in the midst of the perilous times we have decided that we are going to be surrendered wholly and solely to him even in the midst of perilous times bless the Lord Lord for you one more time Lord your hands together for Jesus this afternoon. Come on, put those hands together for the Lord this afternoon. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. We definitely received from the Lord this morning. We received from the Lord this morning and it behoves us now to respond to the word. Every word that God gives there must be a response. Lord have mercy. There must be a response, not just in our words, but in our action. Amen. We thank God for Pastor Watson who delivered that word this morning. Thank God for allowing herself to be used as a vessel of him today. Would you put your hands together? Amen. 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 In the spirit, amen, of surrender and sacrifice, I want you to get your offering together as we get ready to give in the house. Get ready to give in the house. Y'all are awful quiet this morning when I say talk about giving. Anybody excited about giving in the house this morning? Anybody excited about giving? Amen, amen. Giving opens doors. Giving brings release in our life. Amen. 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 You know, there's a story in the Bible of a brother by the name of Moses who was walking. He, had, he was given by God a staff. And God said to Moses, hey, Moses, listen, I, I, I'm going to use you to do great things. I'm going to use you to be a blessing. I'm going to use you to lead your generation and your people into freedom. Lead your people and your, everybody, your family, everybody into a life of freedom. They were living in slavery for over 400 years, generation after generation. Moses said, you talking to me? You probably had an Italian voice. You talking to me? God, you talking to me? And when he said that to God, God said, yeah, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. Can't, I just can't do this. 
I just can't do. So God looked at Moses and said, hey, Moses, what do you have in your hand? What do you have in your hand? What do you have in your hand? Moses looked at himself. He said, okay, I got this staff in my hand. So God said, take that staff and release it. And when he released that staff, that piece of stick, that piece of wood, that piece of wood came to life, Pastor Richards. Amen. And I want to say to you that whatever you have, you might think it might be dead. You might think it might not be enough. But God says in this moment, if you release it, I can use that and bring it to life. And it will be empowered in your life to bring you and your people, you and your finances, you and your generation, you and your job, you and everything, your economics, your social, your mental. I'll use that one thing to bring you into freedom. Anyone have something in your hand today? Do you have something in your hand? God has given everyone something. Everybody has got something. You might think it's dead, you might think it's lifeless and has no purpose, but God has given you something. Anybody with something in the house today? Stand to your feet if, Lord, I feel a giving anointing in this house. I feel a giving anointing in this house. I feel like I'm preaching to raise this offering. Anybody, God has given you something. It can be five, it can be 10, it can be 20. I'm gonna be bold this morning. I'm not ashamed. Anybody, anybody in the house with $100? Anybody watching online with $100? Come on, raise that $100 right now. God bless you, Evangelist Lindsay. God bless you. Ah, Evangelist Weathers. Lord, I feel an anointing in this house. Anybody else with $100? This is not how we normally do it, but I'm going as the Lord is leading me today. Someone has something to release that God is going to use. Anybody with a $50 in the house this morning? I'm giving 100 this morning. Anybody with a 50? Thank you. Thank you, sister. Anyone else with a 50? Come on, we're going to release it. We're not going to keep it. It might be dead in your pocket, but when you release it, it's going to come to life. Thank you, Sister Dion. If you have a $50, is that you, Evangelist Richards? Okay, I saw you waving your hand. Anybody else with a 50? Anyone with a 20 in the house this morning? God bless you, Brother Charles. Come on, those with your hundreds and your fifties, bring them down in this moment. Those of you online, there's a way you can give. You can give through PayPal. You can give through our website at ttcog.com. And you can give through, why am I drawing a blank at this moment? Through Givelify, through Givelify. All right, those of you with your hundreds, bring them down, bring them down, bring down your hundreds. Those of you with your fifties, your twenties, bring them. God bless you, God bless you. Come on, put your hands together. Can we do blessed in the city again? Can we do that again? Uh, we're going to declare the word of God this morning. Those of you with your hundreds, your fifties, and your twenties, bless the Lord. When you release, you give God the opportunity. You give God the freedom to bring you into freedom because you are putting your faith in him. Watch God work. Watch God work. Those of you with your tents, come down. Come down with your tents.
Let me hear you say bless, 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 bless. Come on, stand to your feet with me. Stand to your feet with me. Come on, everybody. Let me hear you. If you believe you are blessed, let me hear you say bless. Come on, stand to your feet with me. If you believe you are blessed. Oh, you see, right believing leads to right living. Right believing leads to right li living. Does anyone in the house believe they are blessed? Let me hear you say bless. I'm blessed. As I move towards a triumphant life. I accept all heavenly concepts, I accept all heavenly concepts and, supernatural ideas and supernatural ideas that God has, that God has to, lead me to, my destiny. to lead me to my destiny. I sow triumphantly. I, sow triumphantly. I, reap, triumphantly. I reap triumphantly. I give triumphantly. I give triumphantly. Come on, any triumphant givers in the house? I give triumphantly. I give Oh Lord, the mass, the mass. Let me hear you. I give triumphantly. I give triumphantly. I live triumphantly. I live triumphantly. Father, we thank you for this offering in the house today. We thank you that you have given us so that we can give unto you. As we release, we pray you will bring dead things to life. I pray that you will bring freedom in our finances, freedom in our giving, freedom in our worship, freedom in everything we do. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Let the church say blessed. Let the church say blessed. We're blessed. Be triumphant. Be triumphant.